Welcome to Dan's Bangers, and this is my review on the Chrysler Voyager. So let's be honest about this Chrysler Voyager. It's not a bad car if it's in America. Basically, Europe has ruined this car. Now, what do I mean? Well, first of all, let's look at the engine. The engine in this Chrysler Voyager is a two and a half litre diesel engine. Why is it a diesel engine in this? Well, because Europeans used to love diesel engines. Yes, they wanted all diesel engines everywhere because apparently they were better for the environment. Thankfully, most people now realize that diesels weren't that great. And thankfully, uh, less and less cars have got diesel engines in them. But this is built right in the heyday where uh, American makers, American manufacturers of cars thought that they had to put the diesel into everything. And therefore, this thing well, I think it's got a diesel engine out of a boat or something. I mean, it is, it is not a good engine. I must admit that I really hate diesels at the best of times. And although, yes, okay, diesels have got better torque, and yes, you can roll coal with them, yeah, it still doesn't really work. So this car really lets itself down with this engine. The next thing that lets this car down, the manual gearbox. Now, I love a manual gearbox. When I had the Subaru Impreza, that car was fantastic because it had a manual gearbox. It was really good fun to fling it round corners and to drive. In fact, manual gearbox or stick shifts are really, really good. This thing, this thing is not good. It's not good at all. In fact, uh, reading all the threads and the forums uh, about this manual gearbox, uh, they put the wrong metals in here. Um, uh, there's the wrong oil apparently in here. It's not built very well and it sucks. In fact, the reason I'm getting rid of this car now, well, the reason I'm getting rid of this car now is because I get rid of cars. But the main reason is because I, I can't change gears. That's not strictly true. Obviously, I can change gears. I just can't change gears using the clutch anymore. Uh, because uh, I think it's a cable problem. So if you do ever buy one of these in Europe or in the UK, please get an automatic gearbox if you can find them. Uh, I looked, uh, they're quite difficult to get with an automatic gearbox because quite a lot of them had this awful, awful manual gearbox that sucks. Another couple of problems with this car. Uh, the electrics are absolutely mental. They go all over the place. They're, they're really haywire. That might be because it's got a low battery, although, to be honest, it starts without much of a problem. But anyway, uh, and I'll, I'll show you what it does. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, the window is broken, so the driver's side window um, doesn't go back up. Uh, I looked into it. It's going to be a, a, a good couple of pounds to, to fix that. Now, on for the positives of this car. Well, it's big and it is comfortable, to be fair. Uh, driving down the motorway, other than the fact it hasn't got cruise control, uh, the car is really comfortable. It's nice and big. That would be fantastic. If I had uh, six other people to put in this car, that would be great. Unfortunately, uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I can't actually put many people in this car. So that's a bit of a shame. Also, the shame with this car is that I got it uh, just as the COVID-19 lockdown started. So again, haven't really driven it as much as I would normally drive a car. Combined with the fact that obviously changing gears is a little bit more tricky than you'd want it to be really adds to the problems and and the reason why i'm not driving at the moment showing you and talking while i'm driving is because uh the strain that i would be uh, in my face and and just driving normally in this car um would would be too difficult for you to watch it is real difficult to change the gear change gears in this car another problem with this chrysler is that it reminds me of being in a 1980s cops and robbers film in America. 
because every single corner, in fact, not even a corner, just a slight twist in the road, and I screech the tires. Now, you could say that I drive like an idiot and that's to be expected. And yeah, you'd be right. I do drive like an idiot. And yeah, you know, I, I like to look at it as driving vigorously. Yes, I'm a vigorous driver. However, this car, every single corner that I go round, the tires screech. Again, I think in America, where there's not many corners, uh, this car would be fantastic. You stick all the kids and you go to soccer practice or whatever. But in Europe, in the UK, we have a lot of twisty, turny roads and I am constantly screeching the tires. There's a lot of practical things about having such a big vehicle. Obviously, you can carry uh, seven people in it and you can carry them in reasonably good comfort. But the seats and removing the seats, which is a, a really good thing that you can do, is you can take out all the seats of this car. Uh, the problem with that is that the seats are really heavy and very awkward to move about. The two just behind me are not too bad, but the bench seat right in the back is incredibly heavy and very difficult to maneuver and store anyway. So there are other cars with smaller, lighter seats uh, that I would get personally. In fact, as a people carrier in Europe, so maybe in America it's different, maybe in America uh, with the automatic gearbox and a petrol engine and cruise control and the big roads, uh, this car might do really well. But in Europe, you can get um, a Renault or even, dare I say it, a Citroen, uh, the Ford Galaxy, the Volkswagen Charan. I think, personally, they're all much better uh, people carriers than this.